Welcome to It's Just That Simple. And joining me is my very lovely co-host and good friend, Michelle Wilson. Michelle, good to have you back with us. Thank you for having me back. How are you today? I am doing fantastic. What about you? I am awesome and highly blessed. Thank you. Well, that is wonderful. Now, we've got a very important topic to talk about, and it's about cybersecurity. What's Absolutely. going on? Absolutely. On Friday, there was a, a huge uh, internet cyber attack. And uh, actually, it took down the East Coast, the internet. It was a company called DYNS. DYNS and um, basically, they're the provider of the internet service to some of the uh, larger, like Twitter and Netflix and Amazon. And basically, um, they used our personal like appliances, like DVRs, um, like refrigerator, because you know those um, hook up to the internet now. And they were able to get through our home, um, you know, home type things and was able to actually just put a whole bunch of code out there that just really slowed down and really took down the internet in the East Coast. And that is really, you know, it can be devastating to somebody that has different appliances like the refrigerators, the DVRs, and others that uh, they rely on those codes to access and for those uh, particular appliances to function. Absolutely, but the thing is, you know, what happened with those appliances when that code went out, it actually took, if you're on the internet, let's say if you're doing business, any type of commerce, you can get access to those companies. So those companies were really affected. And, you know, if you, you know, the internet, if you depend on the internet for business, you weren't able to do business because it, it was, it was about two or three different attacks during the day. You know, they were able to recover pretty quickly, but it was just a pretty scary thing that, you know, that they were able to infiltrate, you know, that type of coding and be able to bring down the internet like that. So that was pretty scary. Do we have any idea as to how many states were affected by this You know, they said it was the West Coast majority. I don't know how many or states. The East Coast? The East Coast, excuse me, yeah. The East Coast uh, majority. And it was like, it started at around 7.30 in the morning. And um, like I said, they, they have a backup security plan. So they were able to really reroute um, the, the, the internet providers to reroute it. However, and it, and it happened a couple more times, but you know, by that time they were really aware of, of the situation and they were able to control it. Very good. But you know, people, I think, in my opinion anyway, in my opinion, and a couple of bucks may get you a cup of coffee to one of the, the upscale coffee shops. Um, it would seem to me that people need to take a re personal responsibility and update their passwords periodically just to avoid this kind of a scenario. Yeah, and that's what really happens when we purchase items like a DVR or like you said, the refrigerator that's connected to your internet, there's a, a, a password that is just a, a soft password. And so if you don't change those, you're actually, your internet service is open to anyone um, getting access. Not only, like I said, that, that happened with the coding, but what about your personal information? If you're ever purchasing anything on the internet, you know, you may have your name, your phone number, um, you know, your credit card information. And that's, I really believe what they're looking for because as we talked about it on a show before about the, uh, the black web, they take our personal information and sell it on the web. You know, I think it was, you know, maybe it was a joke. They just wanted to see, you know, if they can take down the system. But I think it goes a lot deeper than that. And so us as consumers, we don't realize that we really need to protect our, our information. And so when we purchase anything that connects to a network, our cell phones, our, you know, the internet service, you know, if you're doing Netflix, that was another company that was affected. Anytime you're, you're sharing your, your network with anything, you need to change your password. And actually, everyone who has access to that network should have a separate password. Well, I heard it was Netflix, Amazon, um, and a couple of others that were included in that outage. Yeah, Twitter was, and Spoofy was, and um, yeah, there was a quite a few. And those inter those providers, those companies actually used this company to help them um, with their traffic, and so that's why they were affected, because they used this company. They have what's called a DNS, it's the, the, um, the IP address and so forth, so they help them um, guide the traffic. And so basically, the traffic was, this, all this code was just put out there, and they couldn't even guide the traffic, it was just, you know, the system was just like brought down. Basically. Well, fortunately, this company was able to catch it right away and put in a patch to 
reroute and avoid further interruptions as they were coming online. Absolutely, like I said, and you know, the, you do have to have a, secu a security plan when you're in business, any type of business. I mean, they are an internet company, but any type of business, you should have some type of security plan in place for these type of things that could happen. Well, I remember a few years ago, I was in uh, working with uh, one company and you know, to access the materials, I would have to ac uh, update my security information every three months, yes. if not more. And when you're doing a password, sometimes we think, oh, AD, ADCD or 1112 or, you know, really simple passwords. You really want to have those passwords, you know, with a capital letter, or some type of symbol. And so we make the password strong enough, complicated enough that you can't really guess it. So that's another thing when you're creating passwords. Well, I know certain websites will say it's mandatory that you have an uppercase letter you know, lowercase, you should include a number and a special symbol to make that security strong. And maybe even a hash mark or upper and lowercase just to, you know, make sure that you have a fairly robust system security wise. And if you, you know, Netflix, like I said, was one or Twitter, I would suggest you change your password. If you, um, even though it didn't affect us here on the West Coast, if you um, have an account with those, those companies, I would suggest to go ahead and, and change your password. I think sometimes we get complacent. We'll, we'll work on the website and then we may forget about it for a little while and you'll you know, keep the password stored in your laptop or computer or iPhone or Android and you go back you know, maybe a week or two weeks or a month later and it's so easy to, oh yes, yeah, all right, I don't have to remember but it's good to have a separate list somewhere and change that on a frequent basis. Absolutely, and they actually have encrypted um, you know, apps out there that you can actually store your password. I actually have a, an app where it's a like I have a master password, and so if, if one of the companies or like I said, something like this happens, I can actually change one password and change all my passwords. Because like you said, you go into each, each um, account and sometimes they're, they're different, you know, and it's, it's a little bit difficult to remember all the accounts. I find myself resetting all the time because I forget my password. But you know, you can also have one of those encrypted passwords um, apps that would help you too. One of the things too that we were very fortunate with this particular cyber attack, that the company was able to uh, get to it right away and, and put in those fixes and the patches. But there was one that happened back in actually 2014 with Yahoo, and it's just now coming to light. Yes, and one thing I did like about the company that did this happen, you know, they came out forefront and um, really, like you said, addressed it right away and didn't leave us in the blind. I mean, 2014, how long has our information from, Yahoo, if you have a Yahoo account, has been, you know, been out there and so forth, and they're just now finding out, and I really believe that they did know about it before, because if they're in the security on the internet, they should know these patches, and we were getting updates all the time, so. And there were several million people affected by that outage with uh, Yahoo, or at least, you know, the, the uh, uh, invasion of that, that information. Absolutely, yes, and that's why, you know, I always say, uh, we don't have control of our information, unfortunately, anymore. And so, um, you know, what it really means is, you know, when we have breaches and our information is out there, I call it a really a silent crime because we don't know if someone has it until we go, maybe we're driving and we get pulled over by law enforcement and they say, hey, we have a warrant out for your arrest for a crime that you didn't commit. And of course, you know, you said, that's not me, right? Um, so, you know, it manifests in all types of way. You know, we hear breaches all the time and we're almost, we're not really paying attention, but it's when it, like I said, if you get pulled over or, or when you're at the doctors and they say, hey, you know, um, you don't, can't have access to your medical records anymore because, you know, someone else is using your in insurance or something, that's when it really manifests and impacts us as individuals. So if people wanted more information, I know that uh, you're very much into this, and if people wanted more information, Let's get out some contact information. Well, you can contact me directly at michellewilsoninternational.com. And uh, my phone number is 805-304-5088. And you can um, also contact me by email. It's michelle at michellewilsoninternational.com. And there's all kinds of material that you could probably send along their way 
to help them out as well. Absolutely, and actually we have a video um, library of all the stuff that we talk about all the time, and you know, just really contact me, and I would love to, you know, if you want to learn more about this type of information. Wonderful. Well, Michelle, we look forward to our next visit together, and uh, in the meantime, you have a great week ahead. All right, thank you so much, and you too. All right, you've been visiting with, or we've been visiting with Michelle Wilson, my co-host on It's Just That Simple, a production of the Heritage Media Group. It's Just That Simple was filmed before a live studio audience.